Salutations to story lovers and bounty hunters alike. We've got all the drama you've been craving today. Finally reclaimed from the underground archives, we present to our ancestors, descendants, and friends. These backwards echoes. Dad? There's someone here to see you. Oh, it's not that cook again, is it? She already went home. Good. I've had enough of fighting her over that raise. If anything, I ought to pay her less since- Well, it's not her. It's that scientist. Oh, God, Friday already? Well, send him in then. And Dolly? Yes? Cheer up, would you? That gloom of yours is contagious, you know. That's better. Sorry about that. Uh, he's ready for you. Thanks, Dolly. Good morning, sir. What's the good news this week, Frankie? Well, um, truth be told, I'm not sure there is any. Oh? What makes you say that? We've come across something uh, concerning. The chief in Boulder slipped it in with the reports this week. Please, have a seat. Can I get you something to drink? You know I don't drink. Well, excuse me. You looked so shaken up, I thought it might be polite to offer. Now, what is it that has you so concerned, as you put it? Our organization. Are we still committed to collaborating with the UN on the environmental conservation front? Conserving and restabilizing it, ideally. Is that... is it still possible? Well, no one can say for sure, can they? Maybe not. But to the best of your knowledge... What's all this about? The thing is, there's a chance everything we've been working toward, it might have all been in vain. I know this will sound insane, but we think we've received a message from the future. Really? <laughs> well, isn't that something? Like I said, I know it sounds insane. When I consulted with my colleague in research and development, he told me he was almost certain it was authentic. He told me to ask you about it, and... Uh, it might be easier to just show you what we found. Then let's not waste any more time. Transmission Tau 18-X60. Okay. Let's see. Think I got it? Yeah. I think I got it. <sighs> <clears throat> uh, if you're hearing this... I regret to inform you that the rumors of society's collapse have been greatly exaggerated. That's how the line goes, right? So, yeah. Hello. From my basement. And from the year 2068. And I guess from the so-called end of the world, too. If I'm using this thing right, I think you're listening from 2045-ish. It wouldn't let me go any farther back, but who knows. I have to be honest, this apocalypse you guys predicted ain't what it's cracked up to be. Like, don't worry, society still collapses, just not in the fun, anarchist way you might have imagined. My dad tells me that when Grandma was in high school, they used to make games and movies and books about this stuff, and it looked a lot more glamorous. Who knows how long I'll be able to get away with sending messages like these. It's only a matter of time before someone realizes they forgot to come get Grandpa's stuff when he died. But for however long it lasts, here I am. Everyone wants to leave something behind after they go, right? Something that other people can point to and say, See that? That person was... here. But, you know, it's not like anyone will be around to hear me in the future. We're less than a decade away from... You know. So I thought, why not tell people I would be here? That someday, maybe sitting next to your children's children in class, there would be a girl named Everly sending distress signals from the end of history. I thought a lot about what I'd want to tell you while I was walking home from school today. Jotted down a couple of things I figured you'd want to know from the stuff Dad and Grandpa told me. Let's see. Oh, okay, first of all, 
the world is so cold now. Like, your eyes will freeze in your head if you go outside without protective goggles cold. Not that anyone spends much time outside these days, what with the super moose running around. Do you guys have those yet? They're thriving, like, super hard these days. What else? Dad says you didn't have the walking death back then. I mean, not for real, anyway. You guys used to call them... Zombies? Am I saying that right? Although they're not the sprinting kind, as Grandpa used to call them, whatever that means. I guess just the fact we're still around might be news. We're still pretty adaptive and all that, you know, as a species. The last of the surface dwellers moved underground a few years ago, or into space if you're from one of those families they tend to name things after. They say it's still safe to go above ground if you take all the necessary precautions. Dad says that's bullshit. He'd probably ground me for life if he ever caught me topside. Not that I'm stupid enough to risk a fight with a super moose anyway. When we still lived above ground, if the weather was good, I'd wake up early every day to watch the sunrise. Something about seeing the bright orange and deep purple from the sun hitting the snow that was really comforting. Felt like not everything nature did was just meant to hurt us, you know? They try to make it look like it does up on the surface down here, but it just isn't the same. Sun lamps burn out sometimes, and it takes them forever to fix, which makes the pit look even darker. Oh yeah, then there's the pit. God. There's something disturbing about the way the ground just opens up in underground cities, with all the buildings pointing out like jagged teeth. Like the ground is just ready to eat you alive. <sighs> anyway, we're still in school. Zobbies and whatever else be damned. I don't know what the point is. Not like we learn anything that matters there. It kind of just feels like we learn the same thing every year, just with bigger words. Like, if you heard what happened in art class today? Oh, actually, I think there's a way to splice my daily feed in here. So then, what is the point of story and art? Yes, Miss Hopper? I mean, probably just to distract people from how bleak life used to be, right? Always wondering when the end of the world was coming, guessing and being wrong. It, it might have been nice to have a break from all that, you know? <sighs> That's Myra, who might just be the prettiest girl this side of Earth's mantle. So, escapism, yes? Sometimes words pass through my brain and out of my mouth before I can stop them. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm about to say until it's already out there. And everyone looks at the ceiling or the floor or anywhere but at me, you know. Which felt especially embarrassing today, since one of those people was Myra when I said, <laughs> That's stupid. Oh, thank goodness. Everly has an opinion. I thought I'd never see the day. I swear to God. If I were tall enough to reach it, I'd punch a mirror in his stupid throat. And, uh, I might have told him so. Oops. Listen here, you two. I'm happy to allow you to participate if you can do so respectfully. Now, miss, what is it you have to say? I don't think people were running from anything. I think all those authors had to have wanted to force people to wrestle with their fear. They wrote books about terrible places no one would ever want to escape to. Doesn't add up. Why do you think that is? You tell me. Isn't that what you're paid for? Miss Ava, give her a break. You know she can't think that fast. <sighs> I said keep it respectful. My bad, my bad. Maybe they were trying to warn us. Now there's an idea. When there was more ambiguity about the future of the human race, there were some people that were very invested in avoiding extinction. Many of them authors, actors, and other such frivs. Which is, of course, why these industries are closely regulated today. Oh yeah, quick note in case you haven't heard yet. Frivs are what we call the frivolous artists. Which is pretty much all artists, I guess. Basically, you have to be licensed to make anything now, and it's this stupid long vetting process. Even if you pass the exam, you can only make art about what they say you're allowed to. I guess there are perks, 
Like you can read any book you want. Can you imagine? I thought about applying until I found out how spotless your record has to be, and, well, with my big mouth... No. No big loss, I guess. Like I said, they only let you write about super boring stuff these days anyway. Now, on that topic, who can tell me two things Connolly's Friv Act accomplished for the nation? Yes. Well, everyone finally agreed on ethics, which had pretty much never happened before, I think. Someone said the solution it presented was the ultimate moral act or something, right? And that solution was? Uh, it was... Mm. Uh, human eradication. Just say it, Christ. <sighs> Amir. What? She does this every time. Acts like she can't remember or something. I do not. Whatever. Anyway, the act was passed because it was all their fault human eradication became a moral good to begin with. All these fribs were just self-obsessed assholes. Language! Whatever. Self-obsessed jerks. Encouraging people to put themselves and their stupid ideals above everyone else's mental well-being. So really, it also keeps us safe from the kind of people that get their kicks right in crap that gets everyone wound up over nothing. Uh, okay. But what about leaving a legacy? What if they wanted to leave something to be remembered by? There's just... there's got to be something else. Uh, no. Sounds like a pointless waste of time. There doesn't have to be a point. And there certainly isn't. If there were, there would still be little girls and boys dreaming of becoming fribs someday. You mean girls like me? I smiled at her, but she wasn't looking at me. Her eyes were glued to the floor like she would die of shame if she had to look up. Miss Hopper, I... you mean to... Well, yes, I really do. Such a waste of potential. Uh, uh, one more thing. Next time, we'll talk more in detail about the fallout of the Connolly Act. We'll also discuss your final project for this semester. So, start thinking about which of these works of fiction listed here you'd be most comfortable discussing with a hindsight view of the act. Some of my grandfather's favorite books were up there. When he was still alive, I would cuddle up next to him in that big red armchair of his, and he would read me pages of whatever he had his nose in that week. I didn't always keep up, and sometimes I'd just totally pass out. But it didn't matter. I was just amazed such massive words could fit into a container as small as a book. Anyway, if you're doubting whether all this is real, check me. The Connolly Act passed in 2046. You're going to start seeing things disappear real soon. Songs, books, frivs. I'm not stupid. I know all the facts or dates or whatever. I just don't think about them the right way, apparently. I know I'd have an easier time if I just wrote what they want me to, but it just feels like I'm lying, you know? <laughs> God, my grades are awful. No way I'll be able to do that this time, though, because I've got a bad feeling this is going to be a partner project. Miss Eva loves partner projects. And every time I end up standing up front by myself while she tries to pressure someone to work in a group of three with me. I'd ask Myra to work with me outright, but... I think I'd die of shame if she said no. I'd rather she just pity me, honestly. Man. That's all there was? Oh, she goes into some silly teen angst rambling at the end, but nothing important. Are you working on some bill or something? It does mention you by name, so... I wasn't sure if this was some kind of unfinished PSA, or if Connolly is some other relative of yours. Ah, uh, no, nothing like that. But I can confirm its authenticity. You mean... <laughs> it's a genuine message from the future, yes. We've been working with a few other organizations worldwide on developing the technology. Granted, we hoped it would ultimately be a tool in our preservation. I can't imagine you've been briefed on it. After all, you're just, uh, an intern, yes? <clears throat> Assistant Director of Climate Research, actually. I was an intern five years ago. My god, is that right? 
Well, good for you. <sighs> That's what you said last time we saw each other. At any rate, I would think that means I should have been made aware that we were just... just giving up. Well, it's not as if there's anything you could do about it. I couldn't even stop it if I wanted to. You don't want to? You're okay with the fact that you're absolutely going to be cutting your daughter's life short? Quality over quantity. I would appreciate it if you didn't question my loyalty to my family. I think I would know better than you what's best for them. This isn't right. It's as right as anything else for the last 25 years. It was so exhausting always guessing at when the world would end. Not to mention all the fighting and finger pointing. In other words, you don't care who started it. You'll finish it? In other words, if the worms finish it first, it'll be with Dolly's head on the chopping block. So your brilliant idea was to put everyone on the chopping block instead? My family has done nothing but try to make the world a better place. And the world is nothing but ungrateful. At any rate, I can't take credit for this one. Believe it or not, even I have to answer to someone. That someone being? No one you would know. The point is, we can finally share with the general public that we know our expiration date and finally be done with it. Now wipe that scowl off your face. This really will make the transition much easier. Though I suppose the worms still won't be happy about it. Don't call us that. Apologies. I didn't mean... <sighs> At any rate, a father must do what a father must do. And I'm afraid there's nothing else I can offer you to make you understand. Maybe not. But somehow I doubt Dolly would be happy about you condemning the entire human race on her behalf. Please, reconsider this, sir. As I said, it isn't my call. It's too late. The signal's arrived. It's time we let the world know that the struggle is finally over. We can finally stop fighting. And that's that. The research says it's not too late. If that were leaked, there's no way anyone would go along with this. Maybe not, but I doubt that will be a problem. Uh, I could do it. Could you? You're still registered as a permanent resident on Earth, yes? Uh, yes, I am. But what- Tell me, if you were to suddenly find yourself unemployed, how likely is it your immigration request would go through, hmm? 75 is a long way off. Anything could happen between now and then, down there on Earth. The weathermen can only do so much. There's no need to threaten me, sir. I know where I stand. And I know you would never bite the hand that feeds you. Your discretion is appreciated. At any rate, I'm glad we understand each other. I always liked you, Frankie. You're a brave young man. Sure I am. Now, since you're here, would you do me one favor? What is it? Once we've finished going over this month's numbers, take my daughter back down to Earth with you. She's been a moping mess lately. I think a change of scenery might do her some good. You can bring her back next week. Of course. Silly teen angst, eh? Well, that's nothing we haven't handled before. <sighs> Just so you know, whoever you are, I don't expect you to do anything to save us just because I'm telling you all of this. I could not possibly be less interested in whether you decide to become a dancer or a physicist. As long as it makes you happy, I mean. I don't know why you'd want to. Well, maybe I do. My point is, if it'll never be me, it should be somebody, you know? Hell, if it makes you feel better, it's possible I haven't even reached the past in the right universe. Maybe wherever this transmission ends up, the world ends in 2040, and you guys are relieved to hear you have as much time left as you do. Or maybe you already know all of this stuff. So yeah, 
I think it would be best if you kept drawing, writing, singing, whatever it is you do, while you still can. It doesn't matter if it's been said a million times before. I can't help but notice that I live in a world that's outgrown art. A world where we've decided to die. So please, whatever it is you have to say, keep saying it. These Backwards Echoes is written and directed by Stina Carey and produced by Rock Voice Productions, LLC, in collaboration with Joyride Entertainment. Intro and outro narration by Autumn Ivy. Dolly was voiced by Stina Carey. Cesare was voiced by Jacob Dillon. Frankie was voiced by Max Adrian Burton. Lunette AI, voiced by Autumn Ivy. Everly was voiced by Emery Chase. Mira was voiced by Meredith Nudo. Amir was voiced by Torian Brackett. Original music composed by Michael Payevich. Audio editing performed by Zach Elliott. Promotional art created by Paws. Links to the cast and crew socials can be found in the show notes. You can support this podcast and our other creative projects by becoming a patron over on the Joyride Entertainment Patreon as well as subscribing to the Joyride Entertainment and Rock Voice Production YouTube channels. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter so you never miss a transmission from the future. And thank you for keeping Joyride's engine burning.